Welcome to Saving the Cabin. I'm Candace, and I am tackling the door frame today. If you saw in a previous video, when I went to actually put the door back up after refinishing it, I discovered the door wasn't set right. It's actually, instead of set into the door frame, it bumps up against the door frame up top. Um, and they just kind of made a uh, header that kind of hid that fact. But really, it sits about an inch and a half out from the rest of the wall for some reason. But today, I'm going to fix that. At least, I, I hope so. I'm hoping this goes nice and quick. I've had lots of mom duty stuff with cheerleading and essays and, and kids with tummy issues and all that fun, good stuff. Yay! And Jeremy is out of town because that's, you know, he travels for a living. It's been killing me that I have not been able to get to the door. It's been four, five days since I finished the refinishing. That made sense, right? But yeah, I uh, it's time to get to it. And as you can tell, I used the ladder to prop the door up so it couldn't fall over. <laughs> and I just need to slide the door out of the way and get started. I think I might need some tools for this. <laughs> I'll be back. So I'm looking around and I can't find my hammer. I think Jeremy stole another hammer. And my guess is it's probably in his boat with him. And he's gone. Cause that's where all my tools seem to end up. If they're not on the roof, they're in his boat. I, I'm hoping things are just disorganized and I'm blaming my husband for no reason. But looking around, I'm not seeing my hammer. Yeah, a spider descending next to me. Here, how about you just go outside? Where are you? No, 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 you come back here. Come back here. Oh, no. Okay. Nope. Oh my god, it's such a... Okay, <laughs> clear. Back to being mad. Okay, um... Never feels. Something has to go wrong, right? Murphy's Law. I'm going to go wander around outside, I guess, and try to find my hammer. Hopefully he left it on the ground somewhere. If not, it will make it a little bit more challenging, but I'm gonna do this. Tack hammer, here I come. So I just made a reel. Maybe you guys have seen it. Chewing out Jeremy for stealing my hammer. Cause I know he has it. Uh, he was working on his boat trailer and I know he stole my hammer. So I get to work with a tack hammer yay and <laughs> I'm not taking time to go to the store because with kids it'll take like two hours till I get back so let's do this <laughs> ah spider web <laughs> go figure right I'm blaming Jeremy for it all job caulking around this side so of course it's gonna not want to come out very well so it's kind of a one place that's like nice and neat and tidy <sighs> the irony of it all let's try this side Now can I? I mean, this piece is already broken. So let's see. Wiggle, wiggle. The steel toe shoes are good for something. There we go. Ha! Ah, got it started. Of course, I use big nails. Thin wood, big nails. Ah, it's 
mints everywhere in this place. No. Shh. Can you guys see this? It is the smallest scorpion I have ever seen in my life. It's the size of a nail head. Look, nail head scorpion. That not crazy. I'm never gonna get Jeremy to move in this place. We know I'm not a fan of killing bugs. Scorpions do not count as bugs. They count as terror. So my tack hammer and I had a talk with him. He is no more. He's gone. We'll leave it at that. But now I'm going to be freaking out because I didn't know, even when they're babies, I didn't realize they'd be that small. Uh, the size of a nail head is a bit creepy. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are gonna be lots of bug spray around here because I was told, or I read, thank you Google, that uh, bug spray kills scorpions too. We're, we're gonna try that. <sighs> Back to it. Back outside. Yeah. Sorry I'm not showing it to you from this side, but uh, it's one of those days I just, I'm not up to moving the camera back and forth a hundred times. Why is it always the middle is the one spot that I can wedge this thing in? Just work it down then. Alright, so I'll show you in a second what I'm working with up close. But that is 75 inches tall by 36 and a half. This is a standard door that for some reason was left here. There's two of them here too. And this is 79 and some smidge by Okay, about 35 and a half. Standard width, I guess you could say, but the height is off by four inches. And then what is the actual door's height? Let's see. Uh, 70 and a quarter. So let me show you what I'm working with. I had this much of a ledge on this side to build up. And then just rough frame going around. And of course, it bumps out that much. And then to make it swing over this, this piece right here is much higher than this piece. This piece slopes down. I need to raise it five eighths of an inch here to be able to make the swing. Yay. All right, I got exact measurements of what I'm dealing with. The middle of the door frame bows inward by a quarter of an inch. Each side of the door frame is off by three eighths of an inch. And then when we come down to the door itself, one side is over a quarter inch taller than the other side. Kind of like the door up here, the frame. So uh, yeah, so yeah, let's start um, framing out where the door needs to hang. <laughs> All right, so you can see my bubble for the top isn't too far off from level. And then you come down and right here, they chiseled away and it tucks in. So when you put it flush, you can see the gap all the way down. I mean, it's just a little off, but I mean, what was going on here? And the same with this side. It's level up top, then it has a weird bow where it bows out, 
and then it tapers in. Someone hates me. There are parts down here I can at least level out. So I'm gonna start with that. That way it's not one inch of a drop down here and one and a half inch there. There's something moving in there. <laughs> I just made something run from here that way. Got a hammer. <laughs> Gotta be done. You stay. Dude, what's ever in there? You just stay. You want no part of this. There is something seriously moving underneath the house right now. Okay, so I cut my piece off camera that needs to go on the bottom platform. Um, if you're wondering why it looks wet and there's a little bit of moisture around the rest, I use my borax solution to uh, preserve the wood and keep any pests away in the parts that I would not be able to see. Kind of like a safeguard. I'm not taking the camera off again to be able to show you. Just, you know, it is dead even with having a little bit of a lip on this side and completely flush with the floor, almost completely, on this side. We're going with it. <sighs> okay, let me show you what I'm dealing with here. This blue board is perfectly level. You can see it butts up at the bottom. Do we see how much difference there is going up? Perfectly up and down level. Dear Lord. What in the world? All right, so I'm trying to think through this. I'm assuming if I make it right, like, level with what's already there when you go to open the door it's going to drag it even more into the ground instead of letting it be able to swing if it angles a little bit more out it would swing better all right in theory so it wouldn't get caught but right now i have it completely up and down vertical that's what i'm going with maybe the only thing in this cabinet's level boy a bigger hammer would be nice right now no. And you might be wondering why I'm turning it sideways because it has a little head. Beep. I'm trying not to leave a ton of dents in it. And I don't have a smaller piece of wood anywhere nearby that I could use as my hitting piece. So we're going with it. When you kick with steel toe tennis shoes, the top lip comes back and hits you in the top of the foot. Just say it. It worked. Didn't feel good. A little pinch. We're going with it. Going with it. Before I punch someone. Ever had that feeling you're missing a step? That there's something you should be doing that you're not? And it's going to bite you in the butt later. When we redo this wall, I do plan on sealing any gaps here. I'm wondering what else I'm missing. <laughs> Oops. Didn't break my door, right? <laughs> that would be my luck. Someone's probably going to tell me I need a moisture barrier behind here. And that's what just kind of dawned on me. But I am doing a sealant. It's what it is. <coughs> Theme of the day. Fingers crossed. A lot. It 
And of course, I still have to set it up higher. But we just want to make sure it fits in the door. I have the door set into place. It is up on a little piece of wood to lift it properly. And I'm gonna put a couple screws in and just the middle ones and see how it works. One down, another to go. Of course, you can't see this part. It's a secret. Oh, there's foam underneath, that doesn't help. All right, there's a slight high point right here, but it can go back and forth easily over it. We're going with it. Don't ask me how that worked the first go around. That was just pure luck, man. You can see so much daylight at certain angles. It... Again, we're going with it. <laughs> so now I need the kick plate or whatever that plate is that they call it. I'll be right back. I'm gonna chisel this out. It's gonna be hard to let you guys see at the angle you need to, so. Alrighty, the plate is on. Of course, there's nothing behind it. It locks. It's solid when locked. Well, solid-ish, you know, we still have that gap. <laughs> Look how it's uneven. And then we have this gap, which is not the same as up here, but that's just life. So I was reflecting in my head as I was doing this on how everything is uneven and wonky. And I, in my younger days, grew up privileged, I'll, I'll say, but snobby. Um, I would have looked at someone with a house like this, like they were the most utter, poor, low class, white trash, to be honest. If I were to walk into one of my mom's friend's houses that the floor was uneven, I would have thoughts in my head of, you know, oh my God, they need to take care of that. Why is it uneven? You know, my, my, my first stepdad lived in a turn of the century house that literally had a pump in the kitchen. And I, I was mortified. Just the whole house, the fact that there was a tapestry on the ceiling that had 500 layers of dust on it. And it's funny how life can humble you. It really is. Um, I didn't see the beauty in it. Now I look at this door and it's not, well, it's level vertically, but nothing else you would. <laughs> it is symmetrical level anything. But I now, as an adult at 40 years old, can see the beauty in its unevenness and the life that is lived, the character that it has because it's uneven. But I'm telling you, even a year ago, that, that wouldn't <laughs> have been in my mind. It, it really is crazy how life changes and your mind can change with it. I do hope as we get this cabin, oh goodness, looking at the other door across it, how it slopes down towards the fridge, but that's, that's another day. Um, but I hope my kids aren't going to be embarrassed of living here, aren't going to judge others for having houses similar to ours. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I'm still going to, because there are parts in our area where there's tarps instead of roofs, like there's no roof. It's just a tarp and people are living there. I still have a little bit of reserve in my head on those. But, um, and I have to say when house hunting or land hunting, we saw some scary situations out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but that still won't change my head but I think the character of people's older homes definitely will. Um, I still think you need a minimum of, of a roof, um, windows. Um, one house we saw had a, a look like a map up instead of the window. 
who knows what their situation is. They're obviously hard up. Something has happened, put them in that situation. And maybe one day, once I am done with this, I can try to help those people in those situations. I think that might be my new calling. I get questions all the time of what am I gonna do after the cabin? And I've been talking to Jeremy a lot about, there are so many people that you see online that like we had a gentleman recently, he just needed a home for his outdoor cat for a few months while he got back on his feet. He's living in his car and he doesn't know what to do with the outdoor cat. It's freaking the cat out by being inside all the time and then going back into the, the car after, you know, being able to go use the bathroom and come back in. Um, and he was just trying to find a temporary home for his cat while he got back on his feet. And I think I want to be able to find some way to be able to help those people with temporary housing to get back on their feet. Um, I, in my head, I have this tiny home community. <laughs> so I'm not saying on my property. Um, we would need probably a little bit flatter of ground too, because we're on quite the hill. But somewhere in this area, I think that eventually that will, will be my calling. Um, but I'm sure that's years down the road. I know that things happen for a reason. That is my big thing in life. And this cabin is teaching me about who I am and judging people for sure. And I think it's going to give me the skills I need later in life for other adventures. And who knows, I may change my mind tomorrow on that, but that has been the current theme of the head of <laughs> for the future. So that's my little rant. My door is hung up and it unlocks and opens. I will eventually put a frame around the outside of it, like a door stopper like type frame and insulation, but I'm not going to do that yet because we still need to work on the outside here um, with doing the chinking and giving this side a little bit of a chance to set before I do the other side, just in case there is any airflow going through. I want it to cure from both sides the best that it can. And then I'm going to, probably sometime this week, start working on the back side of the chinking on the outside. Um, actually, it may wait just because this awning overhead, not the most secure thing. I may wait for my father-in-law to come and do the roof um, and see if he does this little roofing too with it, um, or if we're taking it down, what we're doing to it. Probably don't need to be working underneath it for many hours just to be on the safe side. So forgive me as I thought through that process, but um, the kitchen is going to be my my project for a while. I have some uh, engraving projects to do, like the woodworking stuff that you see me do with the laser for fall festival stuff coming up for the kids. And I'm going to be using some of the wood that's in the kitchen to make frames for the kids fall festival. The games used to be screwed onto an old gym wall. That gym is no more. They're going outside into a field and they have no way to put their games of, you know, like throwing the football through the hole, that type of thing. They have no way of propping it up in the middle of a field. So I'm going to use, since we have plenty of wood, I'm going to use some of this wood to make stands. And then Thursday and Friday, I'm going to be helping fix those games and put the stands on them and set everything up. And Friday, we will have our big fall festival with all the elementary schools in the county. And it will just hopefully turn out perfect. It'll take a lot of work, but it'll be worth it. It's for our PTO, which is, many people know as PTA. And I'm a volunteer junkie, so. <laughs> I like helping out, but I got to get all this wood out of here. I got to get the ceiling painted. I have to work on the island. Yeah, lots of fun coming up. So definitely stay tuned and I will see you guys with the next project.